Hello and welcome, Fish here with another DCS Essential Guide to the F-18. In this video we're going to look at the Advanced Targeting Forward Looking Infrared Pod, the ATFLIR. And it's currently mounted on our left chin. And it's the only location we can mount it, unlike the, the Lightning 2 Pod, which can be mounted in the center or the left chin. It's nice and compact so if it was counterbalanced with a, a an amram on the right chin it gives a nice balanced aircraft which doesn't need much trimming but like all the pods they need to be uh, uh, warmed up so i think it probably takes about 90 seconds so you're better off doing it uh, well in advance of your flight so i'm going to do it while we're on the ground here and if you go to the right hand panel here above the radar you can see the FLIR switch can be in three modes off standby or on I have it in on mode now so it should start to time out gonna now start to roll and we're going to head towards a target that we'll use to demonstrate functionality and the modes of the pod Gear and flaps up. And I'm going to switch our air to ground mode on, our arm master arm on, and our flare on the right CCD. You can see we have a, night, uh, a not timed out symbol. And we also have a flashing horizontal bracket, which is the same as the horizontal bracket on our hood. And the reason it's flashing is because we're outside the, uh, uh, the advisable range for that. So we can see above or below uh, 5 degrees from the horizon that will be flashing. We're going to set ourselves up for autopilot. So we're going to tune our heading button into our target and we can see on the tape on our hood where our target point is and we at 10,000 mile 10,000 altitude so I'm gonna level up and you can see what's happened here the symbology has changed now because we've gone from waiting not timed out we've gone to operating now can we see the operating symbol there on the left hand side and we've also got our staple in the center and we've now got a flight path marker that's exactly the same as we see it on the hood and it's just useful in case you've got heads down it's it gives you an indication of what your aircraft is doing so we're heading towards the target area and i'm just going to go through some of the buttons here we should be leaving the RCTL button on because if we box it off, you'll see some of the symbols disappear, so leave that on all the time. The laser, the UFC button here on the bottom right, you can see it allows us to set our laser code or our laser tracking code. And we can see it's set for our laser tracking code of 1688 and it should match the laser weapons that we've got on our aircraft. And I'm just going to the, go to the left hand side. I'm going to do the same thing for our laser guided mavericks so you can see those those numbers now match with the number on the bottom of that okay let's go into autopilot mode now and uh, wrong buttons Okay, we're in autopilot mode now, and we are a little bit slow. Though I don't want to be too fast. I'm just going to bump it up a little bit, and then I'm going to go to auto throttle. At the moment, we can see we have a mask symbol on there, which tells us that our and the little diamond is at our, our six o'clock position, and that tells us that our sensor is parked on the top. On the top left hand side we have our, the buttons enable us to zoom in or zoom out but I use the and I highly recommend using 
the HOTAS function for um, radar elevation up and down. And there's five different steps or five different scales allowed in this and they can all be achieved by those two buttons. Whereas on the screen you have to use a combination of the uh, push button six and push button uh, two or three and five there. So done up too fast in speed. So we want to get the, we want to now focus the sensor straight ahead of us. What we do is we can click on the VV slave button, vertical velocity slave button, and we can box that and we can see now we have an image on the screen. And it's not very clear, so I will always use the, the IR. However, we can see um, we're looking straight ahead of us and if we move our aircraft the sensor will move with us so we, we, we haven't stabilized the sensor on any targets on the ground so it's very it's a very little benefit to us so in order to slave it there's a number of different ways we can do it and the first way is by making a target point a waypoint or target point and we're going to do this using the HSI and it's always um, it's a push button 14 there I'm going to select that and you can see it's become a target point and immediately our sensor has slewed to that target location. Now to make the flare the sensor of interest, it's sensor switch to the right once, and we can see our little button in the corner. Uh, our little diamond in the corner there, telling us that it's sensor of interest. Now we have control on the sensor. However, because we've selected a target point, We've got no movement allowable from our sensor switch, our, our TDC. And in order to uh, free it, what we've got to use is the sensor switch to the right. So the sensor select switch is, the, is your friend using the ATFLIR for changing modes and allowing you to be able to slew, not the target, the target designator button. So I'm going to press it to the right once, and now we see the symbols have changed. And I can now slew around and I can also zoom out, and I'm zooming out using my HOTAS. Sorry, zooming in using my HOTAS. And we can see there's various objects there. So I'm gonna pause it for the moment. And we're gonna look at the the symbology. So we can see the symbology there. Okay, I've decluttered the screen to take the uh, the HUD symbology away, and we can see we have two fair, two horizontal lines there. And each time I move them, the spot in the center goes away. When the spot is there, we're actually tracking a target. And this is one of the modes that we can in which we can release our weapon, our tracked weapon, our laser tracked weapon. Once we start moving it, it moves. Once we start moving it, the dot goes away from it, so we shouldn't be uh, launching when we're moving. Now, if we want to lock onto a target, a specific target, we can attempt to do it by putting the spot on the target I'm going to zoom in full there, put the spot on the target, and uh, sensor select switch to the right once more, and we can see now we get two vertical bars. This tells us that the target is locked. And if we look at our symbology, we can see it's called scene, uh, it's called the target lock mode, and targets can be locked either moving targets or stationary targets can be locked in the same way. Now, in this locked mode, moving of the target designator slew does not have any impact on it. What you've got to do is you've got to do the sensor select switch to the right once again to release that mode. So we can see also we have an auto indication here, which tells us that we're good to fire on that target. If I want to release it, 
and we find it's not the right target or it's snapped on to something we don't want I can do this by sensor select switch right once again and it's taken me back into the target mode now that's not necessarily what we want either because you can see that's a good bit away from our target so I'm going to do it another way so we're going to zoom in again I'm going to release that move it on to our target once again uh, I think it was this one down here it doesn't really matter I'm going to CCD to the right once again and we'll lock it and this time in order to release it I'm going to use the TDC button and the TDC button allows for us to do an offset and you can see when I use the sensor select switch after setting an offset the sensor moves to that new target so let's do that once again okay move slew onto the target using the scene mode CCD to the right locks it and now if we want to lock if we want to designate the target next to it we do an offset and then CCT to the right and it jumps to that target and in this mode this is a different mode we can see that's a designation mode the benefit of this mode is we've got a spot in the center which tells us we can release our weapon as well so it's a release it's a, an allowable release queue and the benefit of this one is we can slew so if we if we're on a target and we want to fine-tune it as we get overhead for instance if it's a later laser bomb and we want to make sure we get it right in the center of the target this is very useful because we can uh, we can slew in order to get the focus So I'm going to active pause again here and I'm going to just zoom out a little bit. So you can see we can what we what we did there we started off with a very coarse uh, position using our waypoint marker and we then set the focus to the flare and using a number of different modes we were able to either lock we were able to slew we were able to offset our target in order to get what we wanted. So that's essentially the way these targeting pods should be worked. They should be worked by um, allowing you to focus on the target and then to fine tune using the FLIR. So there's a number of different ways we can get to the target and we saw the first one is using the uh, waypoint as a target point. We can also use the hood as sensor and pick a target from the hood and we can we can then designate that target in the hood and our flare will slave to that target and then we make the flare the center of interest and we can do all the stuff that we just did a moment ago and I'm going to demonstrate this and the, the last mode then is by making the hood center of interest bore sighting the hood and then using our head mounted display in which we get a symbol in order to be able to designate a target and that also will slew the flare to that target location so I'm going to go out of active pause mode now and I'm going to come out of autopilot mode and I'm going to turn away from the target area so in order to, to do this what I've got to do is I've got to bore sight my targeting pod first and I do that by clicking the nose wheel steering button or the on designate button twice and then I've got to do it twice again or else I can click on the vertical slave switch the VV slave switch so now we've seen it it's bore sighted because we have the the diamond right under the IR there and it's not moving now it's sensor select switch up to put the make the hood center of interest with the little spot in the center of the flight path marker there and then it's the de target designate button puts a cursor about seven and a half degrees below our hood 
and you can see we're focused on a lot of different objects there and now you can see we're slaved to the FLIR and once again if we want to focus in on one of those targets we sensor se select switch to the right and now we can start doing our magic with the FLIR I'm going to bore sight that again and I'm going to do it with, with the cage and the button this time and I'm going to go to it's not quite there yet I'm going to go to I've bore sighted the hood now and I haven't designated the target so if we look out of our window we can see using the uh, HMCS I can see a spoke there with a spot in the center of it and what I'm going to do is and I can look at it I can also see it just oh, we've actually lost it now so I need to uh, bore sight again and we can see it in our hood there and I'm going to just pick a spot on the ground there and TDC in and now you can see our laser has slaved to that or our targeting pod has slaved to that and once again I can sensor select switch to the right and now we've got control on that so that's pretty much all I want to say uh, about the targeting pod it's a video that's a little bit longer as an essential guide than I want to but um, it's complicated and documentation uh, covers a lot of different modes and aspects of it and they're not altogether clear. Let, let's have a quick look at the, the uh, image again to just uh, summarize what we need to be looking at. So the three modes that we need to be in in order to be able to release a target are the designation mode. Benefit of this one is you can slew it around the place and to fine tune. We have a target lock mode with the two vertical bars surrounding the target. There's no possibility of movement on this and, there's, and so it's a very safe mode. Once you've got the right target involved, no matter what you do with the aircraft, it won't, shouldn't jump away from it. And we've also got the, um, uh, the scene, Altitude. we've got the scene target locked mode there with the vertical bars, top and bottom, and the little spot in the center. Either of those three, three modes will do. So thank you for watching and feel free to like, dislike, comment and subscribe and until the next time this is Fish out.